Tesla's stock price over the past year is nothing less than absurd, ludicrous, and downright mad. There is really no words to describe the over 800% gain Tesla has witnessed over the past year as people start to realize the company's unfathomable potential. Most Tesla investors would agree that Tesla will become a multi-trillion dollar company within the next several years. But within the next 20 years, a few trillion dollars will simply be a rounding error for the company's monster valuation. And if that sounds lunatic, it's because it is. But I assure you, if you stick through to the end of this video, you'll have a tough time arguing against it. And here's why. Starting off, it's obvious that Tesla won't get anywhere near this market valuation just by being a car manufacturer. It's no doubt that the real potential for the company is with completely autonomous cars as well as solar. So let's start off by taking a look at their full self-driving technology. People often disagree about when we will have completely autonomous cars, from Tesla enthusiasts claiming that we'll see them by the end of next year to skeptics proposing a time frame more like 20 years. But with all the progress we have seen so far with self-driving and what we have witnessed over the past few decades when it comes to technological advancements in general, it's really not a question of if autonomous cars will happen, but rather when. With that being said, we'll take a middle of the road approach when it comes to the time frame and say that fully autonomous cars, or essentially cars with no steering wheels or pedals altogether, will be out and approved by most governments around the world 10 years from now, or in the year 2030. Elon Musk is claiming that Tesla will have level 5 autonomous driving feature complete in just a couple of weeks. Assuming that he pulls through with this, this gives Tesla another 10 years to perfect the technology and win over government approval. And that's not a bottle cap whatsoever, as it gives Tesla plenty of time to scale up manufacturing in order to provide an efficient transition into autonomous vehicles, unlike the choppy transition to electric vehicles over the past 17 years. But what's the big deal with autopilot? Of course, it's an unbelievable technological feat. However, from a business perspective, how much is it really going to help a car manufacturer? Another five to ten thousand dollars in profit per car? Well, that would be the case if Tesla continued to sell cars, but that's not the plan. Elon Musk confirmed over a year ago that Tesla will stop selling cars to the average person as soon as full self-driving is solved. The real money makers for Tesla after developing self-driving vehicles are robo taxis and semi truck. Originally. The plan for Tesla was to develop a low-volume electric sports car, which was the Roadster. After that, the plan was to take the money and knowledge gained from the Roadster to develop mid-volume luxury cars, which include the Model X and Model S. Finally, the goal was to transition into high-volume and super-high-volume cars, such as the Model 3 and Y, and likely a compact car starting in the $20,000 price range. But for several years now, there has been an additional step in the plan, which is scaling up production to several million vehicles per year, setting up Tesla to produce millions of robo-taxis and semi-trucks annually. But how many people will even use these services? Well, the answer is virtually everyone. That is, of course, unless you're wealthy enough to drop over $100,000 onto a self-driving car. And this is due to one simple fact which is that driving cars will eventually be illegal, as robots can simply drive better and more efficiently. This honestly bums me out, as though autopilot would be a nice feature for long road trips and work commutes, I actually enjoy driving to the gym around the corner or the grocery store. But unfortunately, whether we like it or not, driving will be outlawed to significantly reduce car related deaths. And our options will be to either use a robotaxi or buy a robotaxi. But given the price, most of us will find ourselves using robotaxis. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, as it will significantly be cheaper than owning a car and paying for gas and repairs and insurance and so on and so forth. As for how many robotaxis we'll need to meet market demand around the world, 
Well, currently, there are 1.4 billion cars around the world, and it's estimated that we spend 6% of our waking hours driving. Thus, if robo-taxis were 100% efficient, we would need 84 million robo-taxis. But robo-taxis are not 100% efficient, they're only 50% efficient. This is because robo-taxis will have to travel empty from customer to customer as well as when they're charging. Thus, this would double the demand, leading to 168 million robo-taxis being required. But that's still not quite right, as not only are robo-taxis inefficient, but humans are too. An equal amount of us don't drive every single hour of the day. We'll see peaks in demand in the morning when people are going to school and work, and in the evening as people get out of school and work. We'll likely also see peaks during lunchtime as well as various holidays. As a result, for robo-taxis to be a viable and reliable transportation plan for the masses, we'll need 200 to 300 million of them. And that's with current numbers. The human population is still rapidly growing, and the demand for vehicles is growing exponentially, especially in quickly developing countries like China and India. So we'll really need more like 300 to 500 million robo-taxis by the time robo-taxis hit the mass market, especially with a lower cost of entry. Clearly, Tesla needs to get production up before they can tackle this market, and that's precisely what they're doing right now. Currently, Tesla is building two gigafactories, one in Berlin and one in Austin, which will bring the total factory count to five. And these factories are ginormous. The new factory in Austin is being built on 2,000 acres of land and will become the world's largest factory once it's complete by far. To put this in perspective, the largest factory in the world as of the start of 2019 was the Boeing Everett factory, which comes in at 98.3 acres, or just a 20th. Of course, that's just the operational area, but that really helps you understand how big this factory will be. Anyways, Tesla is targeting to produce 500,000 cars per factory per year. Thus, after these five factories are up and running, Tesla will be producing 2.5 million cars per year. Assuming they add two factories per year as they are this year, Tesla will have 20 to 25 factories by 2030. Calling it 20 factories, Tesla will be producing 10 million cars per year around the time robot taxis come out, which is what Toyota and Volkswagen are each roughly producing per year right now. And that brings us into our next concern, which is competition. Sure, the self-driving market is very large and very profitable, but what about the competition? What about Toyota, Volkswagen, and GM? Tesla may have the lead, but the competition can't be that far behind, right? Well, they are. They really are. The legacy car manufacturers have been stagnating technologically for a few decades at this point. They're just now starting to feel the burn of losing market share to electric vehicles, but they're in for a world of pain when full self-driving comes out from Tesla. In March, Volkswagen CEO Herbert declared that Tesla has a 10-year head start in electric vehicles. Let's just say his job as CEO didn't last long after that remark. But if they're 10 years behind in the electric race, how far behind are they on on the autonomous race? Don't take it from me or poor Herbert though, just take a look at the numbers. As of April 2020, Tesla had 3 billion autonomous miles. That's pretty good, but Toyota and GM must be at a few billion, or at least several hundred million autonomous miles. Oh wait, second place doesn't even go to a car manufacturer, but rather Google. And they're at a uh, 20 million. Yeah, it's not looking good for legacy manufacturers. In all seriousness though, Tesla has 150 times as many autonomous miles as their closest competitors. And they're literally going at billions per year at this point, and it's only getting faster. Right now, the best move for the competitors seems to be licensing autonomous software from Tesla and putting it into their own cars. Even if a competitor is able to enter the market 5 years after Tesla with their own software, and that's a big if, Tesla would have 5 full years of worry-free 100% market share, 
during which they can put out 60 million robo-taxis. And that's if they follow linear growth as opposed to exponential growth, which is likely the path they'll choose. Anyways, even if a competitor comes in at the 2035 mark, Tesla could easily keep up their linear growth until at least the end of the decade, allowing for a total of 145 million robo-taxis from Tesla. Even if Toyota, GM, and Volkswagen come in like bulls in 2035, producing 10 million robo-taxis each year, that would only be 150 million robo-taxis, or about the same as Tesla. At that point, we would have nearly 300 million robo-taxis, assuming another 50 million come from other manufacturers like Ford and Mercedes, we would more or less meet market demand by 2040, at which point Tesla would have about 150 million robo-taxis, or about 40% market share. At this point, they would simply continue manufacturing to replace around 10% of their fleet per year. At the end of the day, after accounting for repairs, charging costs, inefficiency, and all of that, Tesla expects each robo-taxi to pull in $30,000 per year in profit. Even assuming that this drops to $25,000 per year due to competition, with their 150 million taxi fleet, Tesla will be profiting not tens of billions like most Fortune 500 companies, nor hundreds of billions like top companies, but rather trillions per year at 3.75 trillion. And that's just the consumer business. Next, we have the trucking business. Every year, truck drivers drive 140 billion miles in just the US, of which 42% is from semi-trucks, or about 58.8 billion miles. However, Tesla can't charge nearly as much per mile as they do for robo-taxis, as these customers are high-volume customers who would likewise expect a discount. Companies like Walmart and Sam's Club would likely want to buy and own these trucks for themselves, but I'm not quite sure Tesla would put them up for sale. Tesla will likely use a fee per mile structure like with the robo-taxi network, especially because these customers will profit immensely from autonomous capabilities. Currently, companies have to pay truck drivers between 28 and 40 cents per mile. Calling it 30 cents per mile on average, Tesla wouldn't even have to undercut the pay to have it make sense for companies to switch over to autonomous trucks. The thing is, self-driving trucks don't have to sleep, eat, or use the bathroom, adding at least another 10 hours per day in driving time. Not to mention, they don't take any days off as well. So even if Tesla charged the same 30 cents per mile, companies would eat up the Tesla Semi, as it's 30 to 50 percent more efficient than truck drivers at the very minimum. But even if they undercut trucker pay by a little at 25 cents per mile, they would still profit a nice amount, as most of this is pure profit. Assuming that they have a profit margin of 80 percent and that Tesla controls 40% of the semi-trucking industry, just like the robo-taxi market, Tesla would profit $4.7 billion per year just from the US semi-trucking industry. We've still got the rest of the world, as well as the regular trucking industry, which would generate tens of billions of dollars in profit. There is also plenty of other very profitable uses for self-driving technology, from replacing Amazon, FedEx, and UPS delivery drivers to the delivery drivers working at Pizza Hut, Domino's, and Papa John's. They could also license their self-driving technology to behemoths in the industry like Grubhub and Uber Eats. But even aside from self-driving, Tesla's lead in battery technology, as the former Volkswagen CEO described, is quite large. And Tesla could license their battery technology to various car manufacturers for tens of billions each. But we're not even done yet, as we still somehow have the entirety of their energy business. Currently, it's estimated that even if Tesla only captures 5% of the re-roofing market at an average installation price of 40,000, they would pull in $10 billion in revenue per year. As solar becomes a more viable option over the next two decades, Tesla will no doubt once again lead the charge. If they're able to get 40% of the market, just like the robo-taxi network as well as the trucking market, Tesla would pull in revenue upwards of $100 billion per year. At the end of the day, Tesla's main profit is from the car business, and more specifically, from the robo-taxi network, which we estimated will bring in $3.75 trillion per year. 
But the other income streams aren't scoffable either, as they'll cumulatively bring in profit in the hundreds of billions of dollars per year themselves. So we'll call the entirety of Tesla's business to be 4 trillion in profit. Let's just be clear here. That's enough money to nearly buy the entire company of Apple twice every single year. So yeah, it's a lot of money. But even then, it's still not government type money though, as the US government spends more than that every single year even right now. So who knows where they'll be by 2040. Anyways, how much would Tesla be worth if they were profiting $4 trillion per year? Well, to estimate this, we would have to estimate their P.E. ratio or the price to earnings ratio. The P.E. ratio of a company is a ratio between its yearly net income and its market valuation. For instance, Apple currently has a P.E. ratio of 37.81, meaning that their $2.13 trillion valuation is 37.81 times their annual net income. In Tesla's case, with 25% corporate tax, they would have to write a trillion dollar check to Uncle Sam on a yearly basis, which would leave them with, nonetheless, three trillion in net income. Now, a fair P-E ratio would be 10, because then, if you bought the company, you would make your money back in 10 years, which would mean a yearly return on investment of 10%. But the thing is, companies don't just stay the same, they grow. Even if Tesla simply matched market performance of 7-8% growth per year after 2040, they would double their profit by 2050. And that's really what investors are basing their valuations on. So Tesla would be valued at at least a P-E ratio of 20, which is still less than the current market average of 26.17. But even at a P-E ratio of 20, Tesla would be worth a whopping $60 trillion. If they boast a P-E ratio in the mid-30s like their tech friends including Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook, Tesla would be worth an eye-watering $105 trillion. Now, will they actually reach this number in the next 20 years? It's very well possible, but not likely, as we'll almost definitely see one roadblock or another during Tesla's growth. But the beauty of this for Tesla is that even if they simply reach a fraction of this potential, they would already be worth tens of trillions of dollars. And it's not just me thinking this either. Many reputable investors are in the same boat, like Kathy Wood as well as Ron Barron. In fact, Kathy Wood, who manages over $11 billion, expects that if Tesla is able to crack autopilot, their pre-split stock price will be a minimum of $15,000 per share and up to $22,000 per share, or a market cap of $3 to $4 trillion, all in less than 4 years from now. Thus, with a large-scale robo-taxi fleet, there's no doubt in my mind that they will be the first company to reach $1 trillion in profit in a single year, and be the first company to be valued at tens of trillions of dollars, all within the next 20 years. In 30 or 40 years, however, they will likely reach hundreds of trillions in valuation or a stock price of over $500,000 per share without any splits. But don't get too excited here, as in 30 to 40 years, we're likely to have hundreds if not thousands of trillion dollar companies simply due to economic growth as well as good old inflation. Do you guys think that Elon can autopilot Tesla to $100 trillion within the next few decades? Comment that down below. And of course, drop a like if you guys appreciate the depth of the analysis and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.